please welcome Joran and Fritz. So, um, first of all, thank you everyone for um, coming over and um, having a look at our module. So, um, we brought a big system, small system, and today we're going to focus on Delay 1, which is our, um, our upcoming BBD module. And it's been a lot of work. Um, we've been perfecting it for the past year. And I really believe that we've done something that no one has ever tried before, is, is to get the ultimate performance out of this really ancient delay technology. And I'm going to give you a very quick demo, a very quick overview of how it sounds. So right now, we just have a little face modulation thing going with the generators. Now, as I turn up the blend on the delay one, we've done with delay one is um, focus on short delay times but get the best possible fidelity out of them so it's a 1 to 50 milliseconds by default delay line and it makes it really good at flanger effects chorus effects car plus strong and it's um, yeah it, it's got something to it that I think we don't get from existing BBD designs let me Add some um, some modulation here. Feature-wise, we have um, a coarse and fine controls for the delay time. We've got a uh, feedback control, and that allows us to uh, add regeneration. So it adds, uh, it's, uh, it's an internal feedback loop with an integral damping filter, and that's on this knob. We've got low and high controls on there, and that actually allows you to switch between low and high pass filtering, which really, this, this adds so much functionality by increased feedback. Now, some people might say, you know, 50 milliseconds, it's a bit short, I want my delays longer. Now, we, we focused on getting a very high clock speed. So BBD is driven by a high frequency clock signal, um, and normally it goes up to a few hundred kilohertz. Uh, we found a way to get much higher fidelity at much higher speeds from BBD. So we go up to one megahertz on delay one, um, which gives us delay times down to one millisecond. Perfect for, for sound design, car plus strong, um, flanger sounds. But we have an external HF inputs. So let's say I take a, uh, an output of, of a filter 8, set as an oscillator. Now the clock is no longer controlled by the um, coarse and fine controls on the, on the delay one but the delay time is controlled by this external filter. And 
we can actually So you hear the degradation, you get the, the clock noise, you get the uh, you get the aliasing, you get everything you get with, with more classic DVD modules. But it's all there for you to um, to play with. And then output wise we have the um, the actual delay outputs as well as um, minus and plus outputs. So these are, this is what we call our split phase topology. It's um, a, a negative wet and a positive wet. So this allows you to put the delay effects actually in the side channel of the stereo fields. And that's great for turning mono signals into, into stereo. Um, we've also got uh, dedicated plug inputs for car plus strong and Everything is voltage controllable. So you've got voltage controllable feedback, uh, time modulation, uh, damping of the of the feedback line. There's uh, so much in here, and um, you know I'm I'm good at designing circuits. I'm not that good at demoing modules, but that's why I've brought uh, Fritz here. He's our super talented, um, multi-talented artist, and he's going to give you a quick jam. Uh, featuring a couple of delay ones as well as uh, the rest of our series on the uh, the monster case behind us, and afterwards he's going to give you a quick rundown of um, of the amazing things he manages to do with this system. So um, thank you very much and enjoy Fritz's uh, concert.
So, yeah, my microphone is on, cool. So I will explain this patch now. It looks a bit hectic. It also felt like this a bit, but it sounded very good at the boot. I hope it sounded good there too, but it was a bit difficult to hear everything here. But I'm going to show you all the parts and my way of thinking and how I work with this case. First of all, it's really fun to patch with a full your analog system because it's all analog and it's now I, I also have my own techno life techno project where I use modular to make everything on the fly. But we tend to use a lot of easy modules to help this work way better and modules that really made for live performances. And I wouldn't never do a live performance with this for an hour or anything, but it's a really cool way of patching and thinking and everything you see is what you get, no, sh uh, no uh, menu diving or whatever. And it's really a straightforward way, and to, in my opinion, it can also sound really, 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 really good. So uh, I'm going to explain my patch a bit. Uh, I'm going to, first of all, I use a generate to clock this whole patch, and now I muted this clock. So I will unmute it. This is a kick drum. I did with generate and two contours, very simple. I use one contour to uh, open a mix three as a VCA where, where I use one channel for the generate. So I can even show it a bit. This is just generate going into the mix channel and also use one individual out of the step to do this sequence. So now I can put it off. Now we just have this rumble. I'm gonna make my envelope a bit shorter and now I send another contour I really love contour for making kick drums the the curves on this thing are really amazing you really have so much depth to tweak your kick drums and when you open the mix 3 fully you can kind of crush it uh, uh, distort it also a little bit which can sound really nice yeah. not sure how it sounds there but it feels really good here <laughs> and I can play with, with it like maybe shorter kicks less punchy ones Yeah, I can really recommend the analog system for making kick drums. You just need a generate two contours and then a VCA, and you really can have a wide palette of kick drums. But it's always fun to endless process them with more filters, more oscillators, and all this stuff to make really an amazing kick drum. So yeah, uh, for the second uh, sound, I have an open hi-hat. Really simple, just a contour. I really love contour. They're really snappy, and it's really good for percussive thingies. And I just put an Orbit 3 in there. I can open the noise a little bit so you can hear the noise spectrum. Uh, it's like a very wide variety of noises and I love to make heights with white noise but this one is very unique and really has a huge spectrum to it. For the closed hi-hat, I used the patch check trick from the manual from Generate 3. When you patch the uh, even out back in the phase input, you actually get a, sine, uh, a noise generator at the output. Let's open the VCA a bit. This comes out of Generate 3. It's really such a multifunctional module, and my boss didn't put this feature in. It's really just how electronics work, and that's what I like about the brand, because all these things, it's really about what happens about, uh, behind the panels and what happens with electronica when you do certain things. This is the noise spectrum. Kind of pitch noise sound, uh, kind of thingy. Uh, then I did a tricky wi uh, trick with... Tricky. Uh, then I did a trick I use two step eights. Wait, I'm gonna do another sound first. 
For this one, I used two step eights and they both make an eight step sequence. And I used our newest module, root four, to switch between these two eight step sequences. So now we have a 16 step sequence, which can also be very fun. I, the root four will be very cool to combine sequences and do all crazy stuff and make like very uh, uh, yeah, unique sequences with this. So I used <laughs> this one for this here. I put just put two generates in a bandpass filter. Nothing too crazy. And I used one individual step of the step A to open contour every now and then. You can hear to make some kind of groove. Then I used, I discovered this trick at Superboot myself. I ping two filters and I put them both to wave through wave folders and it sounds really good. Just a simple trick to get a quick synth voice going without patching too much. Really nice. And then I used these two step eights. I took one to uh, I took one step uh, gate output of the step eights to another step to uh, so the, uh, this step goes further like every eight steps. So it's kind of division by eight. And I use a few triggers of this to trigger these kind of random sounds you hear. And it's kind of a question and answer thingy. And then I also made a snare with another orbit. This is a snare. Now you should hear these sounds panning through the whole room, because I put like these two mix buses that I explained at the end to enhance. And then I use an orbit to use a balance knob to pan the sounds to, uh, left and right. But now I should dis have disabled it, and now I'm going to open it, so now they're going to go more left and right. Then I did another tricky that we didn't really try at Superboot yet, but I synced two delay lines together because I have a high frequency clock out. It's not really a useful thing for much cases, but for this you can chain two delays uh, to each other to make a stereo image. I think I fully closed the delay line, so I'm going to open them now. It's really a spring reverb type of sound. I really love it. It makes your sound more real and like, yeah, real, I guess, in my opinion. That's how we describe it. I can play a bit with the delay times. Quite interesting, I guess. And uh, the, the I stopped the clock a few times. It's because I put it through a switch, and I, then I opened like all the releases of the contours, so we I got, had some sustained sounds. And then I tried to throw in some elements and put the clock back on. And that's kind of it. Just want to say one thing more. I'm gonna put it very quiet, but I'm gonna. <laughs> The cool thing about your analog is everything works at audio rate, so I will try to show it now. Now I'm clocking the whole patch at audio rate. So yeah, that was kind of it. So what I wanted to show is like your analog is really a way to have endless possibilities with patching. And for me, it's really some kind of brain training. And it's, yeah, very fun. And it sounds amazing, really. Sounds really amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Fritz. That was great sound. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for uh, details? <laughs> so, hmm? no questions, no. Ah, you can come here. Uh. 
Um, you mentioned something about using two eight-step sequencers to get some sort of 16-step sequencer. I missed that part. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I don't know, because I put it off. Uh, so last year, no, two years ago, we released step eight. It's an eight-step sequencer. Last year, we brought for the first time this case. We had a lot of fun jamming with it with eight steps. But now we invented a new module. It's root four, and it's a four to one and a one to four router that works on gates or toggles, yeah, or triggers. But you can choose a gate or toggle mode. So what I did, I, I switched, I, I put the two sequences in there, and then I switched between the one sequence and the other one. So the two sequencers are running at the same speed, but I switch off them like every eight steps. But yeah, you can do way more crazy stuff with it. And when you start clocking H1 at different speeds or whatever, I mean, uh, with different steps, you can get really nice uh, combinations from that. Yeah. Thank you for coming.